My name is Barbara Hogue and I'm the Executive Director of the Christ Church Preservation Trust. And the Christ Church Preservation Trust runs the Christ Church Burial Ground, which is located at Fifth and Arch. And it's a historic burial ground that was founded in 1721. And it's most famous um, for having five signers of the Declaration of Independence buried there, and most famously, Benjamin Franklin. We applied for the program because we were interested in solving a question or a problem that we've been running into at the Christchurch Burial Ground where it's known for folks who come to visit that um, there's a custom of putting a penny on Benjamin Franklin's grave and that actually damages the grave because it's a very soft limestone and when the coins are thrown onto the limestone there are nicks and various chips that um, damage the limestone over time. So our thought was, wow, people want to donate when they come here and pay homage or come to visit with Benjamin Franklin, um, and they want to donate money. How can we get them to think about um, using their coins in different ways? And we thought one of those answers might be technology. So if there was a way that we could use technology to harness either donations or thoughts or inspirations um, when people are coming to visit with Ben Franklin. We also thought that because of who he is and who he was, that that would be something that would be really appropriate and right up. He would be very excited about knowing that we were using technology at his grave. Mm -hmm. um, I think we just came up against time and time again. Um, this idea of what do you do in a sacred sp space, which is very different than any other space. I mean, you, you can come up with all sorts of innovation in some other space, but when it's um, a burial ground or a sacred space, you know, we just kept struggling with how to best represent innovation with um, this idea of how we should be respectful at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the design-centered approach was really helpful. And, and all the way through the process, the folks on, on my team, including myself, really struggled with it because it, um, in the nonprofit world, you really want to go to solutions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all of a sudden, if you're, you know, worried about people who are homeless, you want to think about, well, how do we build new homes? Or, you know, or let's go out there and build a shelter. But it's really not about that. It's really about understand what's needed and who the user is and and for us it was really about who's coming to visit you um, what are their goals and aims and so that process really helped us with problem solving um, and sort of resisting moving um, to that sort of solutions based um, option without really working through what the problem was You know, Christchurch is governed by various layers of, of stakeholders. So there's the folks who are members of the church and who are members of their governing board, who are very strict historic preservationists, don't ever want anything ever to change, want Christchurch to look exactly like it looked in 1735 when, when it was built, um, or 1721 when the burial ground was opened. Um, so it's hard making the justification to those folks that feel um, the need to keep everything the same. Um, we always use the argument that you know Christ Church has never looked the same. It's always been an active congregation. It's always been a place where people meet. So it's not a museum. Everything that's um, there, there's a baptismal font that William Penn was used to, to baptize William Penn and it's over 300 years old. And instead of putting it behind velvet ropes, it's something that we, um, is used to baptize children. So um, we often use that kind of our history against those folks who want to maintain the history by saying that, you know, we're living and breathing and things that we use and things that we embrace like technology are things that um, go to really the heart of what Christ Church is. And, what it's always believed in and the principles by which it's always worked. 
Well, definitely I can see us implementing the design thinking into any new idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be about technology. It was, it's just a real change in how you look at something and instead of rushing to a solutions-based approach, really thinking through decision-making based on who's using the product and what's needed and um, working through a problem very systematically. So I can see us using that um, as a template for any major decision moving forward. Mm -hmm. I thought for us it was, it was great that we went through the design thinking process. Right. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't about technology for us in the end. It was about this new way of developing ideas, which in a way could be considered technology. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It, just because it's a, it's a totally radical way of thinking and approaching a problem, a solution to a problem. Yeah. Because so much about working in nonprofits is about um, being able to meet your budget at the end of the year because risk taking isn't really um, rewarded these days. I mean, it used to be more so, but now, you know, you have to have a surplus at the end, you know, an operating surplus at the end of the year. So there's less room to, to make a mistake um, in the climate currently. So um, I think I would always look for ways to, to do that, but I think it more comes into play in terms of individual decision-making processes and small group decision-making processes. So rather than sort of shift and hold the, the whole organization um, you know, sort of put the brakes on something to really work through problems in small group settings in that way, I think would be really beneficial. That's great. We're really excited about going through the next step. So we have all of this research that we've developed through the residency, and um, really the next step for us is about um, speaking to larger groups of um, constituents, so the people that are within um, the Christchurch congregation and the people who meet us, um, we have to go out and sort of present the case to various people, get more feedback, and then we can take it to um, our ultimate goal, which is the design RFP process, where we would put it out to some kind of design firm to come up with a visual representation of our question answered, question that's been answered.